I'm a kind of person, I'm a bread lover. And you know, bread is made with flour. I brought some flour today. <laughs> now, my grandmama was a real cook. She knew how to make bread from scratch. I don't mean she shook it a formula out of a box. Grandma knew how to make it from scratch. Everything from scratch. But these are two types of flour. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. I'm so glad because I'm a bread lover. <laughs> and you know, Jesus is the kind of bread of life that doesn't affect people that have celiac disease. Well, you have a sensitivity to gluten. It's gluten-free because you got two types. This one says all purpose. This one says self-rising. My spiritual folks already got it. Because see, there are some people that every time they do something for you, they want to let you know. That's self-rising. But when it's all purpose, God, you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory, Jesus. This, this is all about you. What I have, God, you gave me. What I know, you taught me. Who I am, you made me. God, you get the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Touch somebody and say, to God be the glory. But there are other people that want everybody to know every little thing that they've done. Let you, you know, do your giving in secret and let the Lord reward you openly. Give God the glory. But see, when you bake things with self-rising, notice self-rising, self-rising. And, and, and you know what this one says right around the ring here? It says self-rising right here. But you know what it, it says? It says pre-sifted. To sift means to take out the good. Pre-sifted. Pre-sifted. See, the devil sifts people and then puffs them up with pride. Oh, oh, he takes that good out. It says pre-sifted, self-rising. Pre-sifted, he's already taken the good out, self-rising. The more people, the less people have in them, the more they puff up. Oh. <laughs> when you're the real deal, you don't have to put shellac on it. But the cheaper the merchandise, the higher the gloss. When you pre-sift it, when you're pre-sift it, when you're pre-sift it, now you're nothing but self-rising. But, but this one says all purpose. And then around this one, it says superlative. Anytime you see super anything, it is pointing God is our superlative. He's the best in the world. He's the best, the, the best that it can ever be. He is the superlative. When you get the all purpose, it's, it's above, it points and gives the glory to God. And we ought to be baking up something in our life where it's all purpose. This is about purpose, a purpose that is bigger than who you are. This is about a purpose that will outlive you. This is about a purpose that will bless your grandchildren. This is not about self-rising. Because if self rises and self rises and self rises, once self is out of the way, then you have nothing else. But when it's all purpose, even when you're gone, the purpose will continue to live. Purpose continues to speak. Let it be all purpose. And look at what the Lord has done. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. And I just charge you, listen, bake your bread with purpose because everything that God does is with purpose, on purpose, and for purpose. So I want to encourage you, get you some all purpose, some all purpose, some all purpose. And if you need to put some yeast in it, put a little yeast in a little leavening agent so you can swell some things up if you want to puff it up, you know, and, and, and keep, keep the door of the oven closed until you know it's ready. Because when you open something that's going to swell up on you and you let a rush of cold air, you can cause the cake to fall. And how many people have fallen because they became impatient? Oh. Impatient. See, you inherit the promises of God through faith and patience. And so when you're going to feed others the bread, it's because 
you've been with God and you realize that this is bigger than me, this is more than I am, and I don't want what I do to be self-rising, I want it to be all purpose. I want it to be all purpose for the purpose of God. I'm formed for his glory. I'm created for a divine purpose. Jesus taught us to pray this way. Give us this day our daily bread. Bread is so good. He said, you ought to ask for it daily. I'm with him all the way. I've already had my bread today. I've already had my bread. I love bread. I love bread more than I love meat. You give me bread, you can keep the meat. I lo- I'm a bread lover. You're looking at a bread lover. And there were times I would be fasting. Sometimes I'd be on my third day of fasting and I had to drive by this bakery. And I would smell the fresh bake. It would just be boiling over, you know, the, the expressway. And when you're fasting, your olfactory sense, your sense of smell is heightened. And that stuff would come up through my car. And I'd have to start rebuking the devil because he's... My mind would just start fantasizing right then and there because whenever you're fasting, you see food looks so good. It smells so good. It just, and I start fantasizing. I start writing my menu out as to what I'm going to eat when I break my fast. He said, give us this day our daily bread. And, and amazing, every time I would drive by there, and Monday through Friday when I had to pass by there, I was smelling that good bread, and it smelled good every day, and it made me want some every day. And the thing about it is this, it wasn't new bread. It was the same bread. It was fresh bread, but made with the same old ingredients. It had the same flour. It had the same milk. It had the same eggs in it. It had the same yeast. It had the same ingredients every day, but it was fresh. God doesn't play games. God can give you the same ingredients, the same prayer. It's the same Word of God. It's the same amazing grace. It's the same mercies that are made new day after day. The same every day, but it's so good. It's, mm, you still smell it. It's still good. I still thank Him for it. I, I, I still get blessed by it. every day. Every day is just like a fresh baked donut. It's like a fresh baked cake. It's, it's just fresh and it smells good every day without having to use new ingredients. You don't have to go to a new formula when the old formula still tantalizes your taste buds. And he said, give us this day our daily bread. Everything that God does, he does with purpose, on purpose, and for purpose. And there are some people that spend their whole life feeling like I'm supposed to be happy. That their whole purpose in life is to be happy. My purpose, I'm just trying to be happy. I'm trying to get up to the right thing and I'll be happy. If I move to the right place, in the right neighborhood, if I get my children in the right school, then I'll be happy. If I marry the right person, then I'll be happy. Once I have children, I'll be happy. Once I have grandchildren, I'll be happy. And they're always looking, and happiness is always in some distant place. And they they think that their whole purpose in life is to be happy. But let me just say this. Happiness is a byproduct of finding and serving in your purpose. Happiness is a byproduct of finding and serving in your purpose. It's a byproduct of finding your purpose. It's a byproduct of serving in your purpose. Happiness is not the goal. It's a byproduct. It's a byproduct. I'm trying to be happy. You get the right one, you will be happy. You serve in the right vocation, you will be happy. You connect with God, you will be happy. Happiness is a byproduct of finding and serving in your purpose. When you do what you're born to do, you'll be happy. You may not, happiness is not having everything you want. Happiness is wanting everything you had, as Shakespeare put it. It's warning everything you've got. It's like, God, I may not have much, but I'm thankful for this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's, 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 it's not saying that you have everything, but you're thankful for the seeds that he has given you that you can plant and get another harvest. It's thankfulness. Let me remind you here of four key elements of calling. Four key elements of a calling when God has a calling in your life. It, it, this is a vocation, a calling for which your purpose is. Uh, it, it is purpose. Purpose is number one, that there must be a godly intention. There must be a godly intention. Purpose, 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 purpose. Secondly, passion. Passion. The word passion really means pain. It means pain. This is a pain really though that is based on love that compels you. When you have passion for something, like whenever you are a fashion person, if somebody comes in tacky, it pains you to look at it. (laughs) 
No, it really does because that's what you're passionate about. I mean, if you're a person of extreme organization and you come in and things are in disarray, it pains you. See, whatever you love produces pain. You love your children, they produce pain for you. Whatever you love gives you pain. That's called passion. But it's the kind of passion and pain that drives you. It, it propels you. It compels you. Passion propels you. Passion uh, leads to your passage. To your passage. Passion leads you to your passage. It's, it's, it becomes uh, a, a, your mode of transportation, your motivation. So the four elements, uh, key elements here of, of calling, purpose, passion, thirdly, people, people, because when you're called of God, it will always involve others. It will always inevitably involve others. If you've got a calling of God and it, it is just you, it didn't come from God. Your calling will always involve your serving people in some way, involving people, serving people. And it involves place because every calling has to be fulfilled in a place where you're going, where you're going. You have to go, you're called. Calling means that it's not where you are right now. It means that you're called to another location. Get up and go to the place that I will show you. Abraham, Abraham, he calls you up to a higher level. Sometimes it may be the same place, but a higher position. And he calls you up. That's a calling. That's always a calling up and a calling out. God will either call you up or he'll call you out. But a calling changes your position. Calling changes your position. It doesn't leave you in the same place spiritually. It doesn't leave you in the same place oftentimes geographically. The calling shifts your position. So the four elements of calling, purpose, passion, people, place. When you're called, he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God calls us, it shifts your position. And the reason that I didn't, I was, you know, I'm an alliterative teacher, and, and I started to put another P up here. I started to put price, because your calling will cost you. But I was, I was put in check by the Holy Ghost. And he says, you don't put price in there, because if you use price in determining the decision to see whether or not you do it, then he says, price then becomes your master and not God. So when God calls you to do something, God will call you to do something that you may not be able to afford right at the time. Because when God calls you to do something, when God calls you to a purpose, when God gives you a vision, when God gives you a dream, he's not going to see whether anybody has cash out you the money to be able to get this done or not. He, he's not going to consult with whatever you have in your little puny account when God calls you to do something. He will check your faith account. Can they believe me? He said, because all things are possible to those who believe. Can you believe him? Can you believe him? Can you believe him? Can you believe him? Here's the second thing. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for your life. See, everything that God does, he does on purpose, with purpose, and for purpose. And then secondly, God has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, notice this. God saved us and called us. You're saved and called. Some people don't realize, they thought that, uh, that salvation was the culmination of everything. They just thought that they were saved. Salvation is not the end of anything. It's the beginning of purpose. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. He saved us and called us. You're saved and called. You're saved and called. You're saved and called. Notice Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, God's got a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God knows the plans that he has for you. There was one lady that I was just reading about this week, and she said that she just hated, you know, going out and taking walks because she said she had bad knees. And she said she found it personally to be boring, so she didn't go out for walks. And then all of a sudden one day, 
She went to an animal shelter and she, she adopted a dog from a shelter. And how many of you know if you got a dog, dogs need to be walked? You need to walk a dog. And now the same lady who used to find walking boring, now all of a sudden loves walking and her knees have improved. You see, you know why? Because the dog gave a purpose to her walk. The dog gave a purpose to her walk. Now here's my question. Have you found the thing that gives a purpose to your walk? Have you found the thing that gives a purpose to your walk? And are you really fulfilled or are you really just really comfortable? Are you really fulfilled or are you just really comfortable? Some people get those confused. Let me give you some signs that you may not be living in God's purpose. Some signs that you may not be living in God's purpose. You feel stuck. You lack passion for life. You are angry all the time. You constantly blame others for what's wrong in your life. Just look straight ahead. <laughs> you have no direction in life. And you don't feel fulfillment in your work. These are signs that you may not be living in God's purpose. You feel stuck. You lack passion for life. You're angry all the time. You constantly blame others for what's wrong in your life. You have no direction in life. You don't feel fulfillment in your work. I want to encourage you, live for something bigger than yourself. Live for something bigger than yourself. Live for something bigger than yourself. Here's the third principle. God's purpose is sure. God's purpose is sure. God's purpose is sure. It's not a fickle thing. It's not a iffy kind of a thing. Job chapter 42 and verse 2 says this, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. No purpose of yours, God, can be thwarted. God's purpose is sure. He said it in Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. God's purpose prevails prevails because the purposes of God are sure. He said in Proverbs 16, 9, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps because God's plans, his purpose is sure. Here's the fourth thing. God will help you to fulfill your purpose. God will help you. You don't have to figure out, how do I do this? Lord, you've told me to do, how do I do? God will help you. He would never give you a plan to do something that you can accomplish without his help. If you can accomplish it without God's help, God didn't call you to it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, notice this. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God works in you both to will, another version says to will and to do. To will and to do or to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God works in you to help you to fulfill the work. The, the, the work. So God will help you to fulfill it. He doesn't expect you to do it without his help. Here's number five. God ultimately works things for your good. No matter how bad it seems, you can go through difficult periods and things will happen that you don't understand. There are certain things that you have to give time to. Romans 8, 28 reminds us, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. If you've been called according to God's purpose, God's going to help you, and he's going to work everything out to your good. He will work everything out for your good. He said that all things will work together for your good. Think of the all things being like a battery. A battery works well. You know why? It, it, it works well not because it, it just has a positive charge. It has to have polarity. It's the positive and the negative. That's what makes the battery work. If you didn't have 
negativity mixed with the positive charge on a battery, you wouldn't get a charge in life. If God's going to charge something, he takes the positive and mixes it with negatives. He says all things, and we know, not we think, not we hope, and we know that all things work together for the good of them, for the good, all things work together for the good of them, the good things and the bad, the positives and the negatives, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, in sickness and in health, in riches and in poverty, all things work together for the good of those that love God who are the called according to his purpose, because God lets you learn some things down in the low place that actually help you when you get in the high place. You learn how to walk with humility while you're in the low place. If you don't learn how to walk in humility while you don't have anything, do you think after God blesses you with something that you'll know how to be humble? I know poor people that are arrogant and stuck up and act like they own the world and they don't even have anything. And if you haven't learned how to walk it down there, how are you going to learn how to do it up here? So God will take the negative things. God will let you have missteps and detours. And he'll say, you know what? I'm going to use that misstep that you had. I'm going to use a baby out of wetlock. And now I'm going to put my glory on that. And what the devil thought was a trick to be able to get your feet messed up. I'm going to save that baby. I'm going to use that baby for my glory. I'm going to turn nations around. You don't know what God can do. Don't you ever count God out because... If you trust him, if you trust him, if you trust him, all things will work together for your good. The good things and the bad things, the positives and the negatives, the ups and the downs, it'll all work for your good. If you love God and if you're the called according to his, to his purpose. And let me give you some ways to regain your sense of God's purpose in your life. Seek the Lord in prayer. Seek the Lord in prayer. Seek the Lord in prayer. That's why he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you. And then he went on to say that he says, you will find me when you seek me, when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, all the way through 13. When you seek me, if, seek God in prayer. He said in James chapter 1 and verse 5, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Seek me, seek me, seek me. Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Let, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Seek God in prayer. Seek God in prayer. Here's the second thing. Um, look at your shape. Look at your shape. When you're trying to come into an understanding of what God has for you in your life and what you're supposed to be, your purpose, you're trying to regain your sense of God's purpose, look at your shape. Your shape, the S of your spiritual gifts, the H is your heart. The A are your abilities, the P is your personality, and the E are your ex is your experience. God will use all of these things. These create a unique shape for you. You can look at your spiritual gifts and see what God has called you to do and what he is not. You can look at your heart where your passions are, where your passions lie, and that, that your passions oftentimes lead you into your purpose. You can look at your abilities. If you don't have any kind of ability to do anything, I mean, God is going to use that in your, in your purpose. He'll use your personality. He's not going to call you to open up a child care center and you can't stand children. <laughs> I mean, some people don't have the personality for it. I mean, they just don't have the personality for it. You know, you, they need to find another profession. There's some people that have the kind of personality where you belong in an office alone. <laughs> you certainly should not be in customer service. And you, that's, that some people have a very short fuse. And they will cuss you out at the drop of a hat. You don't want them answering the phone in customer service. And you're calling in with a complaint. So your personality helps you to understand certain things. And then your experience. God will use your experience of everything that you have been through. That will call you. It, it, it could be that, that you were molested. And that experience now gives you a heart for other hurting people. And out of your experience, he could make it where you were sick or somebody that you deeply loved was sick and you were caring for them. And now you saw that, that as they were being cared for, that there were harsh and abusive people around. But now because of that experience that you had, it makes you a person of tender compassion. And now you have a deep compassion for other people that are hurting the way that you were hurting. Because God will use your experience to help shape you into who and what you're supposed to have. 
So take a look at your spiritual gifts, at your heart, your passion, your abilities, your personality, your experience that you've been. God will use where you have been in your purpose. Every place that I've been in my life and every place that I have served, God has helped to shape who I am today. He's used it, even when it seemed like it was totally irrelevant to ministry, but God used it. My walk in the business world, my, my working, uh, you know, delivering newspapers. That was my first job that I started at five years old, before I went to school every day. And here I am delivering good news. Oh my God, it was... It, it, it's... And then I worked as an accountant. And then I'm accountable for people now. It's amazing. God will use every place that you've been. He will use every place that you've been and everything that you've done. Uh, I've worked for a number of years, all during my college years, as a compound batch formulator. You'd be surprised. You, and I had to follow formulas to be able to get in at a certain time and, and get things at a certain temperature. And, and, and I, I can remember, you know, uh, taking vitamin A and vitamin E and vitamin D and, and, and coconut oil. And, and I can remember getting sage and glycerin. I remember getting all of these different ingredients and putting them down and certain things I had to heat up and then I had to strain it and pour it off and then mix it over into the bat. Oh my goodness. It helped me to be able to put together things, whether I was coming from from uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14 or whether it was coming from Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 and I had to learn how to put things together from a formula of his word I'm just telling you God will use every place that you've been he will he will use it for his glory 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 and, and, and if you'll just trust God to say God I need you to be able to show me my purpose in life. You need to know your purpose. It's the most important question. The two most important days for any human being is the day that you're born and the day that you discover why you're born. And sometimes you cannot discover why you were born until you submit your life to the one who created you. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bryant. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.